but it even makes me more angry when another woman uses it to describe another woman. Anna? Yeah, you, it makes you angry except when the person who's running for president of the United States says it. And listen, let me tell you something. Everything you just said is 50 shades of crazy. To compare running for president to an erotic film or an erotic movie, an erotic novel, is crazy. If he wants to be held to that standard, great. Then go write the art but if you are running for president of the United States, you are a role model. You are a role model for children like your daughter, who you keep quoting. You are a role model for all Americans. You are held to a higher standard. You should not be behaving like if you are in a locker room. You should be behaving like if you are in the Oval Office. And creating the fiction of a brown menace, which I use that phrase to describe this idea, fake idea, of dangerous migrants coming to get us. His people don't like it. He doesn't like it. They both say that he doesn't see people that way. Really? Then why does his namesake put something like this on Instagram? You know why you can enjoy a day at the zoo? Because walls work. Now, he took it down because that's what you do when you get caught doing something stupid. But it sounds like the making of a great debate. So let's bring in Anna Navarro and Steve Cortez. And Brother Cortez, we've had this discussion many times. Uh, they did it by demonizing the people that come into this country and saying that a wall would no. make it all better. His son is echoing that thought. He compares the situation to a zoo. And we all get it. You know, you, you don't have to be fan, you know, sophisticated to get it. That's what they're about, calling these people animals and wanting to treat them that way. Fair criticism? No, no, no. No, that's not fair to say they. It's not, it's not fair. Donald Trump Jr. said that, not the president. That's just not fair, Chris. Why? Because it was Donald Trump Jr. The president didn't tweet that, didn't put that statement out. Donald Trump Jr. to think you're a wall away from being protected by these people. Fair point or no? Uh, yes. I mean, I think, look, I think he is echoing his father, which, uh, who demonizes immigrants time and time and time and time again. And I think he does this a lot, right? Echo his father on many points. But frankly, look, first of all, uh, zoos maybe have fences to protect the animals from people like Donald Trump Jr. who like to shoot them. But, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> Donald Trump Jr. and whatever he says, can I, can I just file my nails? I mean, this Good is problem. an entitled, rich, spoiled little brat who's only called to fame as being his daddy's son, who hasn't built anything of his own, who hasn't done anything of his own, who is somehow trying to hang on to the fame of his father in order to have some level of relevancy. Steve is right. He didn't even make the cut that his brother-in-law and sister did to be part of the uh, Oval Office and the White House staff. Uh, Daddy kept Fredo back home. So Anna Navarro and Steve Cortez. Good to see you both. Let's start with some sound. Here is Rudy Giuliani making his case of what this means for the president, and that will be butted up to actual dialogue between Trump and Cohen on the same point. I agree with you. The tape is a little bit hard to hear, but I assure you that we listened to it numerous, numerous times. And the transcript makes it quite clear at the end that President Trump says, quote, don't pay with cash. Listen, what financing? We'll have to... Anna Navarro, what do you hear and why does it matter? Chris, this reminded me so much of that debate earlier this year about Yanni or Laurel. Do you hear Yanni or do you hear Laurel? Some people definitely heard Yanni. Some people definitely heard Laurel. Look, if you are a defender of Donald Trump, you hear what you want to hear. If you are an opponent of Donald Trump, you clearly hear that he wants to pay cash to bury the story of this playmate, and you put the pieces together. In of itself, uh, this tape doesn't prove anything, except to prove that there are other tapes. This is just one piece in the very large puzzle that Bob Mueller is putting together. Look, uh, Michael Cohen, if he recorded one tape, you better believe this is like cockroaches, man. Where there is one, there is more. Oh, believe there me, has got a couple groceries in Montana says she and her friend were stopped and briefly detained by a Border Patrol agent solely because they were speaking Spanish. She recorded the whole thing on her cell phone and later talked to CNN. So can you tell us in the video, please, why you ask us for our IDs, please? 
ma'am, the reason I asked you for your ID is because I came in here and I saw that you guys are speaking Spanish, which is very unheard of up here. Okay. Just run your name, day of birth. Just we have absence. Or... The Jews because our profile, right? No. Racial profile. It has nothing to do with that. No. It's the fact that it has to do with you guys speaking Spanish in the store. The Spanish in the store. In the state where it's predominantly English speaking. Okay. okay. The woman's voice who you hear, uh, she's from El Paso, Texas. Her friend is from El Centro, California. She now wants the ACLU to investigate. CNN reached out to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection for a response. They sent this statement, quote, they have the authority to question individuals, make arrests, and take and consider evidence. So what's Anna Navarro thinking, our CNN political commentator? When you saw this, what did you think? I thought, well, you know, I pity the fool who is uh, who goes into a racist rant or who detains people for speaking Spanish if they ever dare come to uh, the 305 to Miami where I am. <laughs> God forbid they get lost in Hialeah. They'll never make <laughs> it out. They'll have a heart attack before they do. Um, look, it just, you know, it feels very ignorant. It really does feel very ignorant. Uh, unless you're speaking native Navajo or native Cherokee, I, I don't know why it should, you know, arouse suspicion, much less anger, rants of anger, to hear other languages spoken in the United States. We are a land of immigrants, and you can hear all sorts of languages spoken. Spanish, Russian, Yiddish, I mean, you name it, you hear it in the United States. It is part of what makes us a very wealthy country, what, what enriches our social fiber. We're going to secure the border, and once the border is secured, at a later date, we'll make a determination as to the rest. But we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. So, Anna, what was your reaction to that? What was my reaction? Let's see. Well, first of all, I didn't know whether, whether he had said hombre, which means man, or he had said hombro, which means shoulder, or he had said hambre, which means hunger. Uh, look, bad hombre. I guess he was trying to be cute. I don't know what. Now, at least, listen, at least now we know that Donald Trump has two Spanish words in his vocabulary, hombre and taco. Um, I, it's just one more thing that Donald Trump says. Uh, I, I, I almost feel like my capacity to react has been exhausted. Though I will tell you, I think with 13% approval rating, favorability rating from Latinos, I think a lot of us would agree that Donald Trump is a bad hombre. And add loco, crazy to that too.